My name is Daniel Cook, and um, one of my coworkers, uh, ex coworkers, her name is Robin Gray. She goes to school at the uh, University of Massachusetts. She came with the idea to do this project, uh, Photo Voice, with the intergenerational effects of the residential school system. Robin Gray and I'm Simshian and Miccosu Cree First Nations. I'm uh, born and raised in East Vancouver and I haven't lived on either of my traditional home territories so I really consider myself an urban native um, and I'm at the cusp so I'm urban native youth. I'll claim that for a little longer <laughs> as well. Um, my inspiration for trying to do a photo voice project is uh, I'm currently doing my master's degree um, and a PhD in cultural anthropology at the University of Massachusetts in Amherst. And I feel that uh, anthropology as a discipline, a colonizing discipline, um, needs to be more accountable to the communities that they work with, uh, needs to rewrite some of its history, <laughs> and revamp and reinvent a lot of their methods. Herb Barley. I'm 25 years old. I come from the New Channel Nation of what is now known as the West Coast of Vancouver Island. We're taking photos to express our feelings about the trickle-down effects of residential school. You know the old saying, a, a photograph is worth a thousand words, right? No, not all the time. You know, sometimes the, photo, the photographer wants to takes a picture with a real specific meaning behind it. You know, sometimes it's important for that meaning to come across. I just want them to think, to realize that residential school isn't a thing of the past, you know? It's, it still affects us in very tangible, very real ways to this day. So I'm Linda Gray, Simsan Nation, and I'm the Executive Director of the Urban Native Youth Association. And as you can tell by Robin, I have a, she's a, a mini-me is what people call her. So um, we both think education is so important for, so that youth just have an opportunity to reach whatever their goals are. Robin's doing just fun, this is part of her master's project. And so we're, as an organization, we're so happy to partner with any Native youth who's doing this sort of stuff that's going to help bring about the truth within our community and to the broader community. So she's been doing, the whole time she's been in school, she's been doing things that are um, to uplift our community and she always comes home and she volunteers for our organization and she's just an amazing young woman. <laughs> Photo voice represents, uh, I think, an apt methodology for anthropology to get at, you know, the perspectives that are usually left out of the ethnographic record. But in a more personal level, I'm a descendant of a residential school survivor, and uh, this topic conjures up silence and shame in our communities, um, not to mention in mainstream society. And so I found that my journey in education as uh, a relevant like conduit for addressing that silence and that shame, breaking the cycle, um, 
like I, I learn new tools along the way and I try to bring it back to the community to say, hey, there's, there's a way for us to be empowered by this. Um, I really do this for my family, my father. Uh, he's only 54 years old and he was in the residential school forcibly from the age of six to 15, nine years of his life. Um, his, he's one of 11 brothers and sisters and all of them have gone to the system. As a consequence, I can't speak my language today. in this photo method now I can f facilitate you know maybe Anya will want to do something on something down the road um, um, just be proud be proud of who you are and don't bend over here for anybody on uh, residential schools and how it affected them and their families growing up and yeah it just gives you a whole new perspective about everything so 